about Jesus. I, I have a bigger, I don't want to run out of time before I ask some of these broader questions. And the one I'd like to ask you is, um, it's, uh, Muslims have a hard time understanding how a loving, merciful God, it seems like a contradiction, would crucify his beloved son. They, it, it, it goes against, it's a contradiction to them. Why, can you answer this question, why would God, who's so big and so forgiving and loving, not just forgive us all our sins and have to kill the person he loved most in order to forgive us? I think the answer to that is very simple, and that is, that is that we have such a high view of what relationship with God is, and we have such a high view of what sin does to that relationship, that it requires, and these are God's parameters, these aren't my parameters, they're not your parameters, Preggy, it's God's parameters, it requires a death, it requires a sacrifice, it requires a, a blood that has to be shed. That sounds it kind seems of horrendous to me that God would do that, and the fact that God would do that is, is all the more appalling to me that he'd do it for you, and he'd do it for me. The fact that he would take on that punishment on himself. It is not something that he imposed on himself. It is something that he chose for himself to do. He chose willingly to do that. To me, it's not horrendous. I'm appalled that God would do that for me. Because otherwise I'm lost, and so is everybody else sitting in this audience here. We're all lost because it, it does take a blood sacrifice for the wages of sin is death. Any little sin is death, according to Romans 6.23. That means we're all dead. It's because the and sin is that? so horrendous. Paul wrote Paul Romans, wrote thank Romans. you. And that's where and all this idea is coming from. But let me see, finish though, Shabit. It's because, is, no, Shabit, yeah. before you get onto your tirade on this again, <laughs> let me finish. It's very important you see this. It's because of that sin that separated us from a God that God took it upon himself to rectify it himself. Otherwise, we're all dead. Otherwise, we're all dead. And I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. You see, Peggy, actually this idea was originated by Paul. I mean, he said the wages of sin is death. He made the, the cross the center of his theology. Mm -hmm. And that's why he put so much on it. That's why he said if Christ is not raised, then uh, you're still in your sins. To him, God had to come and die for your sins. But it makes no sense because if God wants, he can forgive us. Just like Jesus taught about the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. The son comes back to his father. The father welcomes him with open arms and has a celebration. Nobody has to die for somebody to be forgiven. Because if somebody dies, then there is no forgiveness you know that means we, I just took my full price I'm a cruel judge I just exact the full punishment somebody goes and dies and then I'm happy but if God was loving and kind he should be loving and kind to his son as well and save his son by some other means and uh, Jay said the son was willing but notice that's the representation in the last of the four Gospels but Matthew Mark and Luke showed that the son was although willing he was submitting but not offering himself. In the Gospel according to John, the story is revised so that Jesus actually offers himself because that just looks better. But even if the son offers himself, it doesn't really solve the problem because if the son loves the people so much that he wants to die for them, doesn't the father love the people more than the son loves? or equal to? Why doesn't the father come himself? You know, I don't shove my son in the, in the path of a moving car to go and save somebody. I go myself and I protect my son. So the whole thing makes no sense. Shabir, let, let me... May I just say something on that? Yes. I think it's very simple why he, didn't, why he didn't come himself. He did come himself, and that's one of the mysteries of the Trinity. But you have to ask us, why does it that Jesus Christ had to come? The reason why is because you say somebody cannot take on someone else's sin. It depends on who sinned against. See, any time I sin, every time I sin, even if I take that pen from you or that watch from you, and I give it back to you, and I ask forgiveness for you, has that not impinged upon God? Yes, every sin impinges upon God. Even eating of a simple fruit infringes upon God. Therefore, he who was sinned against, it is he who took on that sin against, who took on the punishment of that sin. There is the enormity of what we see in the cross. There is the enormity of what we have seen by Jesus Christ coming down as the Godhead, taking on this sin, though he was the one who was sinned against. Now that Islam does not answer. Because, because what you're saying is that if you sin against me, I cannot forgive you until I punish myself. It doesn't make any sense. If I want to forgive you, I just simply forgive you. What you're failing to understand is that every sin that we do not only has a horizontal consequence, it also has a vertical consequence. No, Muslims don't understand that because they don't understand the relationship that is there between God and Look, man. When you say God came down himself and died, then he died on the cross. So that means God died. He it's just getting did. worse every time you go. He certainly did. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. If you, if you said the son died, then at least you have the father to, to look after the world. But, but we if, have no problem. It was God that died on the cross. Why do you have a problem with that? Because if God died, that's blasphemy. Then who would run the world? Who would run the world? <laughs>